this is, this is one part, or like let's just say in terms of half and half, this is half yellow and half white or clear, all direct dyes, and this is still incredibly intense. You guys see how bright this is? This is the Kenra Neons. Um, I'm the type that use what you want to use, you know, whatever direct dye, it's kind of almost all created equal. The things that you're um, seeing that are different is, is longevity and intensity. I mean, pretty much there, there are points of difference, but I like Kenra Neons, um, and that's what it is. It's not diluting anything. The consistency, if anything, feels better, I would say, than just the direct dye alone. Um, and that's what you do. That's what I do. That's not what you necessarily do. You follow manufacturers, blah, blah, blah. But I put a little... <laughs> But I'm being honest, it's true, it's true. So you mix it up, and then that's how I treat my direct dyes when I'm adding V3. Um, and, and then what's even better? Okay, so when you're rinsing, you know how you don't want to do an extra step? You don't want to do an extra step, and you sure as hell don't want to use moisture and protein after all that. There is no extra step, so you're mixing it and go, I mean, you're rinsing it and going, that's it. So, like I said, there's a lot of points of difference that I'm like, this is giving me everything that I thought I needed in another category. But, again, no hate at all. Use what you want to use. Well, what's that? Saving? Yeah, you are saving a lot of time for sure. So that's that. So I was talking to Sydney, and so she has the scenario of my other balayage girls that she has grown out natural color with. Did you have a balayage before? Yeah. I'm going to put this over here for now. I might throw it out to one of y'all later. That's what I might do. Okay. So, yeah, you're like, yeah, free stuff. That's why I'm here. Just kidding. That's okay. It's, it's good to get free stuff. So she has an old balayage, which in my opinion is a well done, nice balayage. There doesn't look to be any like um, little hiccups or boo-boos. I think it's grown out really, really nice and seamless. So let's say you have a client coming in like this. You don't have to bleach. You do not have to bleach every fashion color client. It is really easy. This is one of my easiest like techniques that I've come up with. Honestly, I don't want to say it, it was born out of laziness, but it was like, what if I did this and save time doing it? And it ended up looking really pretty and really, really wearable. So I'm going to kind of do two techniques in one. I'm going to do the whole balayage thing because I'm putting it on this base, but I'm also going to do a shine line because she told, I said, what are your favorite colors? And that's usually what I do with my models. Um, they're nice and they let me do whatever, but I want them to feel really pretty and I want them to like what they see when they look in the mirror. So I'm like, what are your favorite colors? She said, with which this never happens, she said, neon yellow and neon green. And I'm like, whoa, that never, seriously never happens. So that's what we're going to do. I might switch it up. I have some charcoal up here. Um, all my neons, again, are diluted with clear. So I have charcoal, clear, blue, pink, green, yellow. So I'm going to start with the back. I always start with the back because of gravity. I personally like to work my way up and let the hair sit on the, you know what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to do a really irregular sectioning on purpose, not, a, not because I just want to be that much of a rebel. There is a method to this. If you're doing something where you want it to be really blended and diffused, and keep in mind, this is a, a hybrid between the shine line, which is really graphic, and, a, and the balayage thing. So I'm, I'm kind of being experimental here a little bit. You're okay with that, right? Yeah, it always turns out in the end. So I do it a regular sectioning because if you have perfect sections every time, and you know, I, I definitely, bless you, I see the benefit of perfect sectioning if you're one of those like OCD, like type A people, it's fine. But my logic behind why irregular parting is better is because it's very organic. And the more you have like perfect partings, all of that hair and all of that color you've just placed can fall to a visual weight line. And that's when you end up with like, spots or a dark area or just, you know, there are little nuances with fashion color that once you learn, you know, hi camera guy, where were you the whole time? Are you, were you there? He's like, don't talk to me. Okay. So anyway, that's why I do, <laughs> that's why I do the irregular parting that way with balayage too, because if I do it really messy, just think of all that sort of like diffusing that you're honestly doing by doing that. You don't have to back home. If you want to, you can. But if you're doing a really wonky parting, that just means when you feather up the balayage, it's going to fall really naturally. Are you trying to cue me to do something? Of course not. Yeah. I would never do that. <laughs> I have a lot to say. Okay, so while I'm applying, because you guys are going to see what I'm doing, if you have any questions about why I'm doing what I'm doing... Um, there were some questions that people were whispering good. to me in the audience. Oh, good. I want to uh, hear these. The, la the blonde lady right there, stand up for a minute just to say hi. hi. She said she was wondering, she had a question for you while you're applying the color. Uh, she said if your client comes in and you're talking about uh, not washing the hair and rinsing with cold water, if she comes in and maybe she hasn't washed your hair for like a week or she's got a lot of residue on her hair, do you wash the hair before you do a color like I'm this? I'm glad you said that. And yes, because if they're, 
is a bunch of residual like sebum and product and whatever. Just think of that on the outside of the cuticle as a barrier for the color to get through. Plus, they don't, you don't want them to leave with raggedy, greasy hair after they just spent you know, several hours there and paid a lot of money. So pre-wash, a good shampoo, really stimulating, like even a clarifying, that helps too especially with something like this, because if you can open the cuticle a little bit without having had to have bleached it or lightened it first, a clarifying shampoo beforehand is really gonna help you out, for sure. So wash beforehand, because you don't want a shampoo after. Because of, you asked that, right? That's why, for sure. Um, so what I'm, you guys see what I'm doing here so far? So I have the green first, and so I'm working with that whole shine line concept by doing a darker color of a certain shade, a lighter color in the middle, and then switching to a darker color. And this is a pretty large section. I'm not using a foil because my hand will work fine as a platform. I'll actually put a foil underneath because I don't want to dirty up the cape, especially if you're taking a little tip for you guys. Um, if you're, you know, if you're big on social media or you're, you're trying to be, <clears throat> you know, like active on social media and you want to take processing pictures, just put that little towel around or put that foil down. You know what I mean? I see processing pictures where it looks like a fucking, oh, that was a bad one. I didn't mean to, that's, I guess that's how <laughs> passionate I am about that. I don't know, sorry. But I, it just looks like a murder happened, a bleach or something. It's like, just put a towel, just put a foil. You know, you don't have to do a ton of foils, but just do that one, not only for, you know, the, the environment of your salon, you know, if you see a bunch of crazy stuff going on and then, and then post photos, that's just my opinion. I don't know, I don't get too passionate about a lot of stuff, but it's like, that is a bad ass picture of processing hair or whatever, but the cape is like, that's where my eyes are looking. So just, you know, put a towel down, whatever the case is, especially after, if you have that beautiful balayage or whatever you did, and you still got the cape on her and it's just oh I don't know weird weird things irk me that's that's just a tip but anyways so I'm doing the green and the yellow and then continuing to the green if you wanted to be a little bit more precise and like kind of mind your P's and Q's and make sure something doesn't happen maybe use the foil as the partition um, because if if you want to be on the safe side you're still putting yellow on your hand in the middle and then dragging it down so you might have yellow on the underside. I'm okay with a little bit of natural stuff going on because of the whole valleyage thing. But if you wanted to be graphic and very shine line, use the foil, tap on the colors, and that way you're not dragging your glove down with color. And make sure, always make sure you're wiping your glove off between different sections, for sure. So I'm just gonna let that sit. Do you guys have any other questions while I move on to the next one? Somebody asked one question, and then also we have we have about like ten seconds, so what? we're gonna do. I know. <laughs> what? Okay, let me tell you something real quick. I want to tell you guys that this is what I'm gonna do all over the whole head. I might throw a pink in. I might throw a yellow in.